This is our Forex blog for September 11th, 2012. And like we do most days, we want to look at our currency meter to find out which currencies are strongest, which ones are the weakest, and then we want to buy the strongest versus the weak. You can sort and see all the strongest currencies on the top, New Zealand, Australian, Swiss, and Euro. The weakest ones are the yen, the CAD, and the, uh, the dollar right now. Let me reflip that. The dollar. And so basically, the first step of our three-step forex trading system is to simply look for buys in the strongest currency versus the weakest, or if the currency that's on the top of a pair, like the euro, the euro is always on top. If the euro is weak and the dollar's strong, then you want to sell the euro dollar. If the yen is stronger than the dollar, you want to sell the euro yen. So the New Zealand, obviously, the real-time trend strength, 15-minute trend hourly, daily, weekly, and the bottom one is the monthly. Uh, you can trade, and especially scalp, uh, just using the real-time tool. But it's always good to see longer time frame trends line up. The dollar is weak on all time frames, especially after about 2.30 right here, incredible weakness. The daily trend shifted down, the weekly and monthly is already down. Uh, pretty much it's a no-brainer. You want to buy the New Zealand dollar or you can see the CAD was very strong, so because the dollar is on top in that pair, you want to sell the dollar CAD. So let's take a look at the New Zealand dollar pair. And looking at this chart, you can see the hourly moving average in the middle. Above that, which it did a little bit before midnight, you can see incredible strength here in the, uh, the real-time trend strength of all the New Zealand pairs and all the dollar pairs showed less weakness on the pullback and it found support here at yesterday's value area low. This is the point of control of yesterday, the price most actively traded. You can see pretty much spent a lot of time here, here, the previous uh, day uh, or Sunday. You can see it also spent a lot of time there. This was, you know, the POC of the previous day. Below that area, you want to look for sales. You know, if there's real-time weakness, today there was strength. If you wait for it to get above the point of control here, it's off to the races. It just exploded up. And this is the Fibonacci profit target level that I do each night that predicts, you know, the likely maximum high or low. Sometimes I'm a little bit off. If uh, this currency was in a downtrend, I'm going to put that Fib profit target level a little bit lower, find smaller swings to, to, to draw on there. When all the time frame trends are up, I tend to uh, find a swing, uh, the biggest swing possible to make sure it's likely to be the max high. But, you know, this would be an entry. You have a nice little sideways range right here, this little pullback right here, this little pullback right here. And once it's above the upper green 3.0 band, it becomes really risky to buy up there. I would have passed on this one. Now, that's one way of getting into the trade. Another one is to just simply put on our digital signal processing based moving average, five period moving average. Shifted two bars to the right and, and click on DSP, Digital Signal Processing. This is a very fast uh, moving average. And if you get a pullback, and I prefer a two, I mean a three to four bar pullback, which you have here, one, two, three, four, goes back above here. You can see that was a nice trade. Uh, you know, and if this wasn't above the upper 3.0 band, that would have been a pretty high probability trade as well. So that was the first one. Uh, another one that you see here is the CAD was very strong, so we want to sell the dollar CAD. You know, this is a very easy way of trading. And first, looking at the chart, we're underneath the hourly. We're also underneath the point of control of yesterday. Underneath this area, this is the most actively traded price, and the upper and lower value area represents where the market spent 68% of the trading activity for the whole day. It was in this area right here. So it was a very tight range. Uh, that's the first thing you notice and usually after tight ranges markets tend to trend and a lot of times when price is underneath the lower value area when it comes up to it and can't get above it it's it's almost as good a trade as you can ever find and you can see it broke down and it fell a nice 20 pips uh, this is the likely maximum low right here usually off of especially the 2.0 white band you're going to get a bounce and when you don't typically it's going to go one more wave down you draw your fibs on that, and that's an excellent place to get out of the trade. It's also at our green 3.0 band, which usually finds counter-trend trades. If you're an aggressive counter-trend trader, 
uh, when you spot these counter trend buy signals down there, you know, you can see that one went up 15 pips, that one went up, that one went up uh, probably 75, 80% of the time, the 3.0 is the end of the move. And so when it starts going back up, you want to get on board that. You could just use our FX build a trend stop as your entry and exits. Uh, you can see it got you in here and got you out right there. You know, kept you in the whole trade because it's using the real time momentum to know whether to tighten the stop or leave it a little bit wider. You know, if the market's really weak, it leaves it wide enough so that the noise in the market doesn't get you out. And it does a pretty good job of, you know, especially using the currency meter and getting you in and out of the trades. Uh, again, you can also use our digital signal processing based moving average. This is very fast, and we make it even faster by using just a five period. We shift it two bars to the right, and we click DSP. And after a decent pullback of 15 to 25 pips, when it breaks that uh, digital signal processing, you can see it's a little bit faster than even our trailing stop. Good place to get out. And when it's down near the lower band, you probably just want to get out right here, especially when you get a counter trend buy signal. You know, that's you don't have to take counter trend trades, but if you see a counter trend buy signal, you might want to watch it really closely and get out as soon as you know, it starts to go back up. So those are two excellent trades today uh, using this. You can see the Australian was also strong, just like the New Zealand. So obviously we want to buy the Australian dollar. Looking at this, the point of control, the most actively traded price of yesterday is right here. The hourly moving average is right here. We start to have a lot of strength. There's almost no weakness. It breaks from underneath above the point of control, and we're off to the races. And notice again where the maximum high was, Fibonacci profit target. I spend about 30 or 40 minutes every night doing this for my own trading. I upload those Fib targets to the uh, our website, and it automatically gets put onto the charts as well. One thing I've also recently started doing is currencies that have uh, lowered volatility recently. I've sh switched from a five pips per bar down to four, uh, and it just gives me a little bit better entries um, because if a currency that was trading 100, 120 pips is now trading you know, 60 or 70 pips a day, there's less movement. Now, obviously, today was a huge move. It went up a tremendous amount, but if you look at past days, a lot of these times, currency, the high uh, up here at 80 and the low down here at 22, it's only a 60 pip range. So because of that, I've lowered uh, the number of pips per bar. I still leave it a little bit wider on currencies like the euro. You can see it's five pips per bar. It still moves about 90 to 100 pips a day. Um, and again, just notice the point of control right here. Uh, above it tends to go up. Uh, below it tends to go down. You know, it's a good place to get in and out of trades. And if you don't like our histogram, if you would rather have colored bars, we have another option, FX build a trend uh, color candles that show you dark green when it's super strong, uh, light green when it's you know less strong, and red when it's weak. So if you thought this FIB area here was uh, going to be support when it pulled back, there was some dark red here, dark red. It sh shifted green right here, you can see, went up. And then it got dark green and just continued that trend. On this chart, I'm also showing the previous hour's point of control. Uh, it's an excellent place to enter. If you're underneath the point of control and it breaks out above it, it tends to go up. And notice also how it acts as support. This is the most actively traded price from 9 to 10. Uh, and you know because of that, it, traders tend to defend those prices and it tends to act as support. It's a very high probability buy when you have an uptrend that pulls back down, finds support here, can't get underneath it, even a pip underneath it. As soon as it starts going back up, you want to buy. A very high probability, and you can see it went from 30 all the way up to 70. 40 pip move. 